no one watches Fortnite anymore. Fortnite is dying. Why is it dying? Between 2017 and 2019, everyone was talking about Fortnite. 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 I mean, the biggest movie in the world referenced it. Thor, he's back. That kid on the TV just called me a again. Noob master. But then something happened, and it seemed every content creator was claiming that Fortnite was dying. Fortnite's kind of dying. It was always fine until we started trying. How can a game with such a large, fanatical player base and billions of dollars in revenue be dying? And why is it not dead yet if people started predicting Fortnite's death back in 2019? Well, we could spend hours talking about the multi-year creation of Fortnite and how Epic almost killed the game before it was even released. But what I'm more interested in is why Fortnite should have died multiple times after its launch. When Fortnite was launched, the game was released as a horror survival game, not a battle royale. And the objective of Fortnite Save the World was to build forts at night that you would defend against zombies. Thus the name Fortnite. The game got some traction at launch, but not as much as Epic Games wanted, and much of the player base was leaving to play something else. People just weren't interested in zombie survival games anymore. Epic had taken too long to release their game, missing the years when zombies were at their height. Death was imminent, and Fortnite began its gradual decline. But Epic, seeing the nails in the coffin, started strategizing on how to save their new survival game. Epic had spent too many years developing Fortnite to just let it fizzle out. So teams at Epic went to work trying to find a solution for their dying game. During their research to save Fortnite, Epic saw this other game that was booming in the industry called PUBG. PUBG was exploding in popularity. Everyone was playing this new game. 100 player deathmatch with people fighting till one person stands victorious. It was like Hunger Games meets the modern military. I mean, how cool is that? Epic, seeing this meteoric rise of PUBG, added a battle royale to Fortnite, hoping to drive people to buy their survival game. It worked. Well, kind of. Millions of players did flock to Fortnite, but not to purchase the survival game, but to play the free battle royale. And only after one week, it already had 10 million players. Epic hit gold. So they switched their focus from Fortnite Save the World to Fortnite Battle Royale. Epic completely shifted the genre of their game and was able to avoid death number one. Fortnite Battle Royale is eerily similar to PUBG. With the release of Fortnite's Battle Royale and its similarities to PUBG, many of the players who flocked to Fortnite were from the PUBG community. PUBG of course saw this and thought, hey, we're losing players to a game that looks pretty similar to ours. We should sue. So PUBG called up their legal team and sued Epic for copyright infringement. Now it's 2018, Fortnite continues to rise in popularity as Epic and PUBG are preparing to go to court. Okay. This was going to be the battle of the year with the two biggest games fighting to survive. Videos were being made, articles were coming out. Everyone was excited to see these two game companies duke it out in court. Then out of nowhere, PUBG just dropped the lawsuit. No settlement made, no court battle. PUBG just walked away. What happened? Why back out at the 11th hour? I mean, PUBG creators took some bad PR for instigating this lawsuit and then just walk away from the lawsuit with nothing to show for it. The answer, Tencent. For those that don't know the name Tencent, basically imagine a company who owns everything in the gaming industry, but buys everything up from the shadows. That's Tencent. And just to give you some context, Tencent owns part of all of these game studios. Included in that list, of course, is Epic Games and Bluehole, the creator of PUBG, with Tencent owning 40% of Epic and about 14% of Bluehole. So as Epic and PUBG prepared for court, I imagine that Tencent swooped in behind the scenes, meeting with executives and stopping the lawsuit. I mean, both games were bringing in millions, if not billions of dollars. Tencent wasn't going to lose money over a feud between two of their companies. So this time, Epic skated away scot-free, riding high on the rise of Fortnite, and avoiding death number two. As we fly through 2018, Fortnite continues to rise in popularity, overtaking League of Legends as the most popular competitive game. Fortnite looked like a juggernaut that couldn't be stopped. And what's even more incredible was that everyone seemed to know what Fortnite was. Even people who had never played a game or picked up a controller in their life. As Fortnite's popularity rose, players of all ages flocked to the game. Moms around the world were now spending money to buy something called a V-Buck so that their kids could buy skins. This child is continuously coming to ask me for money to buy virtual products 
in your game. Well, thanks to those skins, Epic was pulling in money hand over fist, with most of the revenue being driven by teenagers FOMO or fear of missing out on the current Fortnite trends. Epic loved it, of course, so they constantly added new content and purchasables to the game. So much content that even Call of Duty players were made jealous by these almost monthly releases. That said, most competitive Fortnite players didn't really care about all the new cosmetics, purchasables, and changes to the game. Epic was still focused on developing a high-level competitive Fortnite, so all the changes and additions being made were only amplifying competitive players' abilities to keep getting victory royales. Well, at least until Season 5. The first real sign of a competitive decline was when Epic buffed the submachine gun and nerfed the double pump. Do you remember when the double pump separated the boys from the men? Well, with season five, Epic finally realized they didn't want double pump or a high skill ceiling. What they wanted was to keep making money off people's FOMO, and Epic needed social gamers playing Fortnite to capitalize. But how do you keep people playing a game? Well, you pump them with dopamine and make them addicted by helping them win more victory royales. But how can less skilled players win more victory royales? Well, you need to even the playing field. Fortnite's competitive scene was widening the gap between the top players and new players. It was too difficult to get a victory royale when your competition was building a tower 100 feet tall at the same time you get two walls up. Epic needed to keep the casual people playing Fortnite. Thus the buff to the submachine guns and the addition of the P90. The dumbest meta ever, dude. However, after wide community outrage, the submachine guns, specifically the P90, were nerfed. But their initial buff in Season 5 showed the path that Epic would continue down over the next year. Zombies in Season 6, Infinity Blade in Season 7, Ballers in Season 8, and don't forget about Mechs in Season X. The community had a heyday when these were added. Each season seemed to add more stuff that changed the competitive Fortnite formula, and not for the better. It felt like Fortnite was dying with Season X, and that the game was on its last leg. Everyone could feel it, even Epic. So Epic made a plan to avoid death number three. When Season X was over, Epic ended it in style. But something was different. The new season didn't start like previous seasons, and the black hole didn't go away. Epic had gone dark on social media and wasn't responding to any questions about season 11 or the black hole. People were losing their minds over this, and the world was clambering for answers. Do you see this freaking void? Look at the void! Finally, Two days later, after the end of Season X, Season 11 was released. But this time, it wasn't a new season. It was a new chapter. Specifically, Chapter 2, Season 1. It's happening, chat. It's happening. Oh my god, I've waited literally two days for this moment. This chapter updated Fortnite, making the graphics better, building faster, and the map was completely different. Everything but the name screamed sequel. Fortnite could title it Fortnite Chapter 2 all they wanted, but really, we were looking at a brand new game. The Fortnite 2 marked a new era of Fortnite, the social era. This chapter featured Marvel characters, Star Wars, Halo, God of War, Tron, Alien, Batman, Rocket League. They even feature one of my favorite fantasy characters, Kelsier from Mistborn. Shout out to my Cosmere fans out there. But seriously, the collaborations were insane. I mean, Travis Scott put on a concert in Fortnite with millions in attendance. A concert in a video game. I know this is old news and that Marshmallow already did a concert in Fortnite before Travis, but somehow the Travis Scott concert just really surprised people. Why was a prominent music artist doing a concert in a video game, especially a competitive one? I mean, League of Legends has been a huge game for years. Why haven't they done something like this in their game? Why aren't you watching some Red Hot Chili Peppers or Imagine Dragons while jungling as Superman? Because of reason number four, Fortnite is now a social game. It may sound crazy to say that Fortnite is a social game and not a competitive game, especially if you watch the current player base, it's dizzying to see how fast they can build. But just like my video on why Nintendo hates people playing competitive Smash, Epic and Nintendo are focused on the same thing, making their games for a casual audience. That doesn't mean Fortnite can't and isn't competitive, just like Super Smash Bros. The focus of Fortnite, however, isn't on competitive play. Epic Games isn't dumb. 
they could see the Google trends just like us. They knew that Fortnite was dying down in popularity. Epic had made too many changes in chapter one, trying to bridge the gap between the competitive and social players. And the problem with Fortnite making such drastic changes, Fortnite at first was viewed as a competitive game and not a social game. I mean, all the top competitive streamers were knee deep in this game in 2018. However, having your revenue stream depend on the hype of competitive players is dangerous. Most top FPS players and streamers will play a game for a while, but they'll jump ship the moment something better comes along. It's gonna be, it'll be good for like a week, but then it's just gonna go, it's gonna slip right into that traditional what's sandbox that, what's view. What's everyone's viewership today with this? I'm just curious. I've got 120,000. But as Epic put their plan in motion of moving from a competitive to a social game, there was a problem. The transition had the inverse effect on the game's population. We see the negative impact of this switch in the revenue. Fortnite went from making $5.4 billion in 2018 to $3.7 billion in 2019. A decrease of $1.7 billion. That is a huge loss in one year. And Epic needed to do something drastic if Fortnite was going to survive. They needed a complete rebrand. Which brings us back to the black hole. This event was a gamble. You don't shut your game down for two days and go radio silent if your game is performing well. Epic was using this opportunity to get the world's attention and let everyone know what type of game Fortnite had become. And in so doing, push off death number three. If you were to use Google Trends as your source of truth, you would see that Fortnite did take a hard dip when they switched to a social audience, and that the game still hasn't been nearly as popular since 2018. What is interesting though, is that when Epic rebranded in 2020, we see the game on Google Trends even out and the revenue generated from Fortnite go up, not down. What is even more incredible is that in 2021, the revenue of Fortnite surpassed the revenue of 2018 the year that Fortnite was on top of the world, with 2018 making 5.4 billion and 2021 bringing in $5.8 billion. Now I'm not saying that the revenue of Fortnite will continue trending upwards year after year. I'd be amazed if they do. However, what I am saying is that Fortnite isn't dying anytime soon. Epic Games has been very intelligent with how they have positioned Fortnite. By changing the genre of the game, to avoiding legal battles, to changing their target player base. Fortnite is making Epic Games more money than ever, and with Fortnite Chapter 4 just releasing, I don't doubt that we will see Fortnite Chapter 5, 6, and 7 in the upcoming years. Hey, real quick before you go, we want to begin highlighting cool and upcoming indie games after each one of our videos. If you know a great game that you want us to highlight, join our Discord and let us know what indie game we should feature next.